Welcome everyone to the debate on the topic, our video games art. We have two debaters today, Stanley and Gordon. Stanley, please present your opening statement on the topic. Thank you. The question of whether video games are art is one that has seen evolving responses as the medium itself has grown and changed. We have moved past the era where games were seen purely as children's toys or simple distractions. They are now a part of our cultural lexicon. Video games, like any form of art, are a means of expressing ideas, emotions, and storytelling through creative design and interactive experiences. Art is not confined to static paintings on a gallery wall or sculptures in a museum. It is an ever-evolving conversation between creator and audience. Video games engage players in ways traditional art forms often do not, allowing for an immersive and interactive experience that can elicit a breadth of emotional responses. From the visually stunning landscapes and detailed character designs of games like Journey and The Last of Us, to the engaging storylines and worlds of Bioshock and Final Fantasy, video games exhibit all the hallmarks of traditional art. Moreover, they often combine multiple artistic disciplines, including visual art, narrative, music, and performance, to create a cohesive and affecting experience. Their ability to not only depict a creator's vision, but also to incorporate the audience's active participation is, I argue, a form of contemporary art. The narrative depth and aesthetic appeal of many games qualify them as artwork, deserving of the same respect and consideration as films, literature, and music. The critical and academic attention given to game studies further underscores their cultural significance. Thus, video games should indeed be regarded as a legitimate and powerful form of art. Thank you, Stanley, for your insightful opening statement. Now, Gordon, it's your turn to present your perspective on the topic, are video games art? Thank you. While I acknowledge the skill and creativity employed in the creation of video games, it is important to maintain a distinction between what constitutes art and what does not. It's critical to understand that the primary purpose of video games is entertainment and gameplay and not necessarily the expression or provocation of deep thought and introspection, which is often a hallmark of traditional art. Art is frequently characterized by its ability to stand the test of time, transcending cultural and temporal boundaries to convey universal truths or provoke deep emotional responses. While games can indeed be emotional and immersive, they are, at their core, designed to be played and to provide enjoyment through interactive mechanics rather than to serve as an introspective or critical commentary on the human condition. This is not to say that video games do not contain elements that are artistically crafted. However, the conflation of technical skill or aesthetic appeal with art diminishes the value of what art has represented historically, namely, a form of expression that challenges, reflects, and transcends its medium and context. Additionally, it's important to consider the commercial aspect of video games, which are developed with marketability in mind, and are often subject to financial constraints that can limit the creative process. Unlike artists who might seek to express a personal or philosophical message, irrespective of public reception, video game developers must cater to the demands of consumers and shareholders, which can lead to risk-averse choices that favor established formulas over true innovation or meaningful artistic expression. Lastly, if we were to label video games broadly as art, it would necessitate the inclusion of a vast range of games that are simplistic, repetitive, and lack any claim to artistic intention or value, thus diluting the definition of art itself. We risk trivializing the pursuit of art if we indiscriminately apply the term to media whose predominant function is entertainment rather than contemplative or aesthetic engagement. Therefore, while I recognize the artistic elements within video games, I stand by the argument that video games as a whole should not be classified as art. Thank you, Stanley. You now have the opportunity to question Gordon about his perspective on the topic, are video games art? Please proceed with your question. Gordon, while I understand your concern about the potential dilution of the term art, do you not agree that art itself has always been subject to evolution and redefinition? For instance, Film and photography, once new and novel forms of technology, faced similar criticisms about their artistic merit but are now widely accepted as art forms. 
How can we justify the exclusion of video games from the classification of art when they, like film and photography before them, combine technical skill with creative expression? Moreover, could you address how the interactive nature of video games might present a unique avenue for artistic exploration, potentially expanding our understanding and definition of what art can be? Thank you, Stanley, for your question. Gordon, your response to Stanley's queries would be greatly appreciated. I appreciate the question, Stanley, as it gets to the heart of the debate. It is true that art has evolved and that the definition of what constitutes art has expanded over time to include new mediums. However, there is a distinction between the evolution of the medium and the intrinsic qualities that define it as art. While film and photography have indeed been re-evaluated and classified as art forms, this is largely due to their use in conveying explicit artistic visions and the existence of works within those media that clearly prioritize aesthetic, emotional, and intellectual engagement over entertainment. Video games, though they may employ narrative and aesthetic elements, are primarily designed with interactivity and gameplay at the forefront. The experiential nature of games, their focus on player agency and challenge, often comes at the expense of the immersive, contemplative experience that characterizes more traditional art forms. It is also worth mentioning that although interactivity presents new possibilities, not all potentialities equate to artistic depth. The metric for defining art should be about quality and intent rather than the breadth of a medium's capabilities. As for expanding our understanding of art through interactivity, while it is an interesting prospect, it does not automatically render the entire medium artistic. Interactive art installations, for example, are indeed a recognized form of art, but their artistic value lies in the intention to provoke thought and foster introspection, rather than solely to entertain or engage participants in a task. We must differentiate between the two and recognize that while video games could potentially be art when they are intentionally designed with that purpose, the majority of games are produced with entertainment and profitability as their main goals. Thus, while certain games might qualify as art in their own right, the medium as a whole remains distinct from what is traditionally considered art. Thank you, Stanley and Gordon, for your thought-provoking arguments. We will now conclude the debate with closing statements from each of you. Stanley, please provide your closing statement on the topic, Are Video Games Art?, followed by Gordon with his closing statement. Thank you. Throughout history, Art has been a reflection of cultural progress and technological innovation. Each new form of art has had to fight for recognition, whether it be the novel, cinema, or photography. It's essential to recognize that the transition of these forms into the realm of art did not diminish the concept of art, but rather enriched it. Video games represent a synthesis of multiple artistic disciplines, integrating elements of visual art, music, storytelling, and even performance. To suggest that the inclusion of play and interactivity inherently disqualifies video games from being art is to ignore the richness of experience they offer, and it overlooks the nuanced ways in which they can and do comment on the human condition. Many video games are created not just with commercial intent, but with the desire to communicate a message, tell a compelling story, or push the boundaries of what is possible within the medium. They provide a space where art is not passively observed, but actively experienced, creating an intimate connection between the work and the audience. Even if some games are designed purely for entertainment, this does not preclude the medium as a whole from being recognized as an art form. After all, not all paintings or films are considered high art, but we do not question the artistic validity of those mediums. In conclusion, while not all video games may be created with artistic intent, the potential and actualization of artistic expression within the medium are undeniable. Video games, at their best, engage the audience in a profound dialogue that is as worthy of the label art as any other recognized form. As such, we should embrace this evolving medium and recognize the contribution of video games to the broader spectrum of artistic expression. Thank you, Stanley, for your well-articulated arguments in favor of considering video games as art. Your perspective on the evolution of art and the enrichment brought about by new forms of expression is thought-provoking. 
Gordon, your emphasis on the distinction between entertainment and traditional art, as well as the focus on the intent behind artistic creation, provides a valuable counterpoint. It's clear that both of you have presented compelling perspectives on the topic. I'd like to thank both debaters for their insightful arguments and constructive engagement. The debate has certainly shed light on the complexity of this issue. In the end, the question of whether video games should be classified as art remains open to further exploration and discussion. Thank you for the opportunity to close this debate. Throughout our discussion, we have navigated the nuanced terrain of what we consider art to be. While video games undoubtedly embody creativity and can evoke emotional responses, the core components of art, purpose, introspection, and the unbound expression of the human spirit are not universally present in the medium of video games. Art is often described as something that exists for its own sake, a creation that represents an individual's or a culture's introspection or worldview, not something primarily shaped by market forces or consumer feedback. Video games, by and large, are commercial products designed for interactive entertainment. And while they may borrow elements from traditional art forms, the fundamental intent behind most game design is to engage consumers in a recreational activity, not to reflect on the deeper aspects of the human experience or to communicate a higher truth. This is not to disregard the individual titles that might rise to the level of art, but to carefully consider the medium as a whole and its predominant purpose. If we accept all video games as art, simply because they have the potential to include artistic elements, we also risk undermining the very concept of art as a sacred space for contemplation and cultural commentary. The intent behind creation, the focus on profitability and mass appeal, and the interactive nature of gaming that prioritizes player experience over reflection, these aspects keep the majority of video games distinct from other forms of art. In conclusion, though video games may often be artful, they should not be broadly labeled as art. Doing so would blur the lines that define what art has represented throughout human history, an expressive testament to our existence, independent of temporal enjoyment and consumerism. It's this discernment that must guide our understanding of art, and why we cannot unequivocally categorize video games under its banner. Thank you, Stanley and Gordon, for your well-articulated arguments on the topic, Are Video Games Art? Both of you have presented compelling perspectives, showcasing the complexity and nuances of this issue. Stanley, your emphasis on the evolving nature of art and the rich potential for artistic expression within video games is thought-provoking. Gordon, your focus on the distinction between entertainment and traditional art, as well as the intent behind artistic creation, provides a valuable counterpoint. It's clear that this debate has shed light on the multifaceted aspects of video games as a potential art form and has underscored the necessity for thoughtful consideration and ongoing dialogue. In the end, the question of whether video games should be classified as art remains open to further exploration and discussion. I'd like to thank both debaters for their insightful arguments and constructive engagement. This debate has certainly provided much food for thought. With that, I formally conclude the debate on our video games art and look forward to continued discussions on this fascinating topic.